how to measure a curve in Adobe Illustrator. Hey everybody, welcome to another VectorMade.com tutorial. Today, for some reason, my voice is just extra low, so I kind of enjoyed doing the intro a little deeper this time. Anyway, um, I was teaching a class the other day, and the whole classroom was uh, putting together uh, promotional products, and they were designing packaging for their products, and it was a, a lot of different types. And one gal had a... Um, something like this it was like a piano shaped box basically so this would be like the top portion of the box you know of whatever product it was I, I can't even remember what she was selling but it was just a cool shape and she needed to figure out like what the length was from the top of this curve here to the bottom side here because she needed to make the side and then um, put some graphics on that so i thought i'd do a quick tutorial on how do you figure out the uh, distance of a curve here and then maybe give you like some pointers on how to show that in a three-dimensional setup in Illustrator so um, first thing I would do is if you've already got your shape you know the dimensions that you want to make it um, this one's eight and a half tall by about seven and uh, not quite seven and a half wide um, probably would make it closer to seven and a half in the real world but for the purposes of this tutorial we'll just go with it so I uh, take this shape bring it over here make a copy and all I'm doing to do that is I'm holding shift to keep it in line and I'm holding down alt key so that I'm making a copy and you'll see the cursor changes so that you know you're making a copy and you're not just clicking and dragging right so uh, do that again hold alt shift and alt make a copy then <clears throat> I would open the Pathfinder options while everything is selected and click unite to bring everything together as one piece. Now, what this one did, because I've got a little transparency on this front piece here, it just gave it that same transparency and, and it's all white. So I'm gonna bump that to black and I'm gonna bump this up to 100% so that you can see the shape. Now, to make it a little bit easier, I would go ahead and shift uh, or uh, swap the um, fill and stroke like this um, so that you can just see the line that you're gonna be dealing with. And then get your direct selection tool or hit a and come over here and select all the points that aren't this one through this one okay so i think i've got all of them selected i do go ahead and hit delete to get rid of those and then you're left with this line segment over here which goes from this point all the way up to this point right and we just want to know how long is that now if you select this you'll get width and height, but that's just going to tell you the width and height of the bounding box that it's in. So this kind of blue line that you see here tells you how, how, how tall it is and how wide it is, but it doesn't tell you the length of this. So to get that, you'll come over to Window and then hit Document Info. And then just make sure that under here, Object, Objects is selected. And it will tell you Paths 1, that's correct. Um, and it's 11 points, that's correct, there are 11 points in this. Just check that to make sure you have the right thing selected. And the length is 10.8548, okay. So what I would do then is, uh, let's say we wanna make this three-dimensional, go ahead and make something that's 10.8548, and here's my dialogue. Um, and we'll just say it's a height of one, I mean, this could be whatever, maybe it could be two, but let's just go with one for now. And I'm gonna make this the fill, um, let's just make it the same color for now as this piano. Let's see, bump that up. Okay, well, that's good enough. We'll just do black. <laughs> Didn't realize there's a lot of transparency in this. Um, so that is sort of a flat representation of what this space looks like. Um, the distance from here to here, if it was flattened out and rotated to face you, if that makes sense. And if it doesn't, let me help you out by dragging this stuff over here for now. And I'm going to bring this over here and make another copy. But first, um, no, let's do the copy first. We'll do the copy. Go ahead and do like we did. Um, and I'll make it black and jump it up here. So doing the same thing we did earlier. Now, when you're back here, go ahead and grab this. Come over to symbols and just name it whatever. Um, you know, piano is fine. Um, and just say it's a graphic. 
So all good. Okay, now come over here, grab this, go effect, 3D, extrude and bevel, click isometric left, and then um, make the extrude depth 72 points, which is one inch, it's the same thing. Just make, you can also type in one inch and then it will automatically fill in 72. So if I do one IN 72, um, and then click map art, and then select, you're already on the, the front face of this, which is what I want. You can kind of see a little bit of a red outline. It might be very faint. Um, it's actually hard for me to see on my end, so on your end is probably difficult, but you can tell it's that because it's the same shape, see? And go ahead and select that, um, that one um, symbol that we made, and I called it piano, and it should automatically fit into that exact size and hit OK, and then hit OK again. And it might take a sec for this to happen. It's actually a fairly intricate piece of artwork. Um, see, as it took it a little, took my computer a little bit. And I've got a BV computer, but that's the that's what it looks like in three dimensional space. See, so this would be the top, this face of the three dimensional object, and we're just wanting to know how how much distance is there from here all the way to here. We figured that out. That is this. So this is the flattened out, no curves. Um, in it, uh, so to speak, version. And the cool thing about that is then if you want to put some graphics on the side, say like a logo, I just kind of grabbed a, a logo online. Um, then you can like click down here and sort of, let's make sure this is in the background first. You can right click and say uh, arrange, uh, send to back, or you can select it and hit control shift and left bracket to send that all the way to the back. That's what I did there. Um, and then just kind of see if this fits in that space and it does pretty well. I might actually shrink it in just a tiny bit more um, to give a little bit more margin around the edges. Um, that's roughly what that will look like. So if you want to show what that looks like in this 3D model, go ahead and click here, bring it over here, make another symbol. Let's just call this logo. Um, graphics fine. And then we'll come back into this. Um, if you've already done the 3D extrude and bevel, you can click on the shape, come over to appearance. If that's not open, it's under window. Um, and then you can d click on this 3D extrude and bevel mapped uh, effects, and it will bring up this. Just go back to map art. And then we'll go to the side that we want to put the logo on, which was, let's see, it's probably. I think it's that one right there. Yeah, so there's a little bit of red outline around this section. So that's what we want. We will grab logo, place it there, and I'm gonna go ahead and hit preview just to see if I can see what it looks like in real time here, and it will probably slow up on me again. Yep. And the only thing I might do, it looks really good. It's actually nice and centered in this space. Um, the only thing I probably would do is uh, uh, rotate it around uh, maybe 180 degrees, something like that. Although it may give me fits here because previews on, um, may take it a bit. I'm going to take preview off and then try and flip it around. This is fairly taxing on your computer. And, and like I said, I have a really good one, but even with a really good one, sometimes it takes a good while to get these things to work. Let's see. Come on, baby. There we go. Sometimes going back and forth helps. I'll hit preview again, and let's see what it does. There you go. I'll just go ahead and hit OK, and hit OK here. And I've got a nice 3D representation of um, the out, you know, what my package is going to look like finished product. And then, of course, you would need to just keep this um, as part of your build files. So if you sent this to a printer, uh, you'd want to send the top, you'd want to send the, the back, which would just be a mirrored image of this, probably with uh, whatever content information, UPC barcodes and all that sort of stuff. And then you'd want to maybe flesh out the rest of the uh, side here. So that, remember, this size is only from here to about here, um, but you'd want to do the rest of it as well. And then you'd probably need to add flaps and things if it was going to be produced and then... Um, uh, like fold it in on itself, something like that. But you can always have the printer help you figure out the best way to do that. Uh, you know, keep an open line of communication with them. That's always a good idea. But basically that gets you 
the gist of the tutorial, figuring out how long uh, things are in a curved setting, um, and then figuring out you know how you can lay that out in a in a flat setting to actually create the artwork that you need to get it produced. I hope this was helpful to you guys. Um, let me know what you think in the comments down below. Please like, subscribe, and share my videos. I'm really growing in numbers. I think we're about 735 on subscribers as of right now, and I'm headed to 1,000. So I'll see you in the next video.